Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about a topic that has been on my heart for a while now and something that I think needs to be addressed. And that is Christianity versus New Age and why I talk about things from both a Christian perspective and more of a New Age perspective on this channel. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't like this video and talk to me in the comments and check out my description box for links to my social media and my discussion group. The first couple of hours after a video post, I am usually online answering comments. So come talk to me. I would love to meet you and hear from you if I haven't yet. And if we talk regularly, then of course I love hearing from you. Over the past year, I've been sort of open with both Christian and New Age concepts and language on this channel and I started from more of a very Christian perspective and have slowly incorporated more new age concepts. My first video that really um, started to get the views and the interaction was on Christian universalism and so my channel ranked early on for Christian universalism and a huge core of my audience was Christian universalists, deconstructing Christians, people who were uncomfortable with New Age language and wanted me to address things from a Christian perspective. I tend to use the language that the people I'm speaking to are most comfortable with. And so I spoke from a Christian perspective and the questions that I was primarily getting were questions on the Bible, questions on Christian universalism, questions about Christian doctrine, and so those are the things I was primarily addressing in the beginning. But as time has gone on, and I've shared more New Age concepts, New Age language, because I'm comfortable with that, and I feel those concepts and language can be really helpful for explaining and shedding light on spiritual topics, my channel has attracted more of the New Age crowd. The questions that I'm getting have shifted more to questions from a New Age perspective. And now I get sort of a mix of both. And so I have on my channel both people from a traditional Christian background, deconstructing Christians, and people from more of a New Age background and everywhere in between. So I'll get comments from Christians, you know, the original Christian crowd, telling me that I've become too New Age and I'm getting too far away from the Bible. And then of course I'll get comments from New Agers asking why do you have to use religious Christian language to begin with? Can't we just get past all that religion? And first of all, I want to make it clear that I am not offended ever, ever by anything that you guys say to me ever. I want you to feel free to express your thoughts and opinions as long as you are respectful to each other. But what I'm addressing here today, I'm addressing because I think we as a whole, as people who are part of the spiritual community, we are missing a huge capacity that we could be taking advantage of to grow in compassion and unity with those who think differently and believe differently and use different terminology than we do. So I'm going to speak to the Christians first and then I'll speak to the New Agers. And keep in mind I'm speaking just as much to myself because I have one foot in both worlds. But to the Christians I would say if New Age language bothers you and trips you up, if you're uncomfortable with it, that is fine. There is absolutely no judgment in that. You use the language and follow the teachings that work for you, that speak to you and help you grow along your path. However, what we need to remember is that there is a whole group of people who are not benefited by spiritual teachers only using Christian language. Many, many people who are part of the New Age community are actually ex-Christians and left Christianity because they were abused by Christians or damaged and hurt by Christian doctrine. These people have found other spiritual paths that allow them to have a much healthier relationship with God. Something that I really want to bring to light here is that many times, not all the time, but many times what I've seen happen is that people will leave fundamentalist Christianity and become a Christian universalist or a Christian mystic or 
some other variation of deconstructing Christian. And what happens is that they end up being just as fundamentalist about their new ideology as they were about the old. They think they love fundamentalism, but they've kept the fundamentalist mindset and taken it with them into, say, Christian universalism. This seems to be really prominent in Christian universalist circles, where we will say, oh, we've discovered the real gospel. We've discovered the real truth that God saves all. And now we have to get everybody to believe this. Fundamentalism is a mindset that says there's only one correct belief system and I have found it. And in order to be saved, you have to believe exactly as I do. Even if we're, but we believe that God saves all, we're still going to say that you have to believe that God saves all in the exact way that I do if you want to be saved here and now. This ideology completely disregards what we say we believe, that God's big and powerful and wise enough to handle it, that God can speak with different language to people who think and believe differently than we do. <laughs> now, I will say here that I do believe in truth. Truth is unchangeable and immutable, whether we see it and believe in it or not. And it is not dependent on our belief in it in order to exist. And because of that, truth is not threatened by our subjective understanding of it. There are many ways to come to a knowledge of truth. There are many ways to experience truth. There are many words used to describe truth. There are many concepts used to understand truth. There is only one truth, but there are as many ways of knowing truth as there are people in the world. The truth is very simple. God is existence itself, so God is truth. And God is love, so love is truth. Love is the way. Any road that leads towards love, whether directly or through contrast, leads towards truth. And specifically somebody who claims to be a universalist or a Christian universalist claims to believe that all roads ultimately lead towards truth. So those of us in the Christian community need to loosen up and let people follow the path that speaks to them and trust that God is indeed big enough and wise enough and loving enough and powerful enough to reveal himself in whatever way he needs to. We believe that God is powerful enough to save people out of hell. So can we not believe that God can speak through New Age language to a New Ager and Buddhist language to a Buddhist and Hindu language to a Hindu and Jewish language to a Jew? God doesn't have to use Christian language. Christian language is not necessary for people to grow spiritually. And I do believe that the Christian religion is valuable and beautiful in so many ways. And I know maybe that hasn't come across a lot in my videos because a lot of my videos have been criticizing what I believe are damaging Christian doctrines. But there is so much beauty to be found and so much truth to be found in any of the major religions, including Christianity. But no one of them is the only way and has the corner on truth. Now to the New Agers, I would say, and again, I'm speaking to myself as much as anyone else. Again, if you don't like Christian language, there's absolutely no judgment. If Christian language triggers you, that is okay. I can relate to that. I was triggered by Christian language because of my past experiences, so I get it. What New Agers need to be aware of and be sensitive to is that even though some of us were turned off by the religion of Christianity, that is not the case for everybody by a long shot. There are thousands of people who have found value and peace in Christian teachings. And if people are comfortable and happy and growing within Christianity, who are we to ruin that for them by being constantly snarky and aggressive and challenging their beliefs? And yes, I realize I've challenged a lot of Christian beliefs on my channel, but I'm a firm believer that it needs to be done in a respectful way. In fact, there's a huge group of people who are questioning the more troubling doctrines within Christianity who are not ready to leave the church as a whole and may never be, and that's okay. They need to understand God and Christian concepts such as sin and judgment and the fall. 
in a more healthy way from within a biblical framework because that's where they're at and that's what they can accept. When I was coming out of Christianity, it was steps and I needed things explained to me for the step I was at. And for many people, reframing these concepts is enough and that is okay. For many others, reframing Christian concepts with Christian terminology is a necessary step on the path. I know it was for me. And they will never get to where they're going if they're not allowed to take that step. Where do I stand on Christianity versus New Age? I don't consider myself a Christian or a New Ager or a follower of any other specific religion. I try to see myself more and more with each passing day as an expression of divine love, as the presence of the I am. And I try not to identify with other labels. I do consider myself a follower of Jesus Christ, and I think there is much beauty to be found in the Christian religion, as I stated earlier. So I'm going to be honest with you guys for a minute. I've been deconstructing for about five years now, and for about the first three years of that deconstruction process, I was still very comfortable within a Christian church because I could see the commonalities between Christianity and the other religious ideologies that I was studying at the time. And so I didn't get tripped up on the language. But as time went on, simply because I was not able to express myself in that environment, I began to feel inauthentic. I couldn't really be who I was. I ended up leaving the church. So probably about a year, I started to feel really uncomfortable and my aggravation was growing. And so I went through this period of time where I was really easily irritated by Christian concepts. And that's not the type of person that I had ever been before. I always kind of prided myself on saying I can go to any house of worship and be comfortable because I can find commonalities and I can find the common bond that we have through love and devotion to God. And so I saw myself developing this attitude towards Christianity about three and a half-ish years after I had begun deconstructing. And I really had to get on top of that and work through it right away because I didn't want to be one of those people that swings to the opposite extreme. And it happens all the time where people will come out of one belief system and they will completely flip and then have nothing good to say about that belief system anymore. When in fact, there is beauty and goodness in every religion. For the most part, there's always going to be those extreme ones that are preaching hate, but you get what I'm saying. There is one path to God, and that path is love. As I see myself more and more as love and everything that constitutes love, inner wholeness and peace and beingness, the less I have of anything outside myself, let alone a religious label to tell me who I am. The path of love takes many forms and can be spoken with the language of any religion or without any religious language at all. But since on this channel I'm kind of forced into a position where I have to use words, I will continue using the language that is most beneficial to whoever I'm speaking to. Most of my videos are a direct response to a question asked, so I will continue using the language of the person that is asking the question. So some videos will be more Christian and some will be more new age and there will be a lot of mixture because that's really where my heart is at to be able to show each other that hey we're talking about the same thing here. To me it doesn't matter if somebody uses the word enlightenment for instance or salvation, oneness or theosis, spiritual evolution or sanctification, hell or karma. The same threads of spiritual truth run through it all. There's a lot of extraneous stuff in any belief system that has to be dug through and there's always going to be superficial differences. That's because most of what constitutes any religion is not divinely inspired. It's the human made structure that's been placed around the divine inspiration. But when you get to the heart of the important topics, the parts that are divinely inspired, what we find is that we are talking about the same thing. We are talking about our connection to our source, how to find that, how to live in that. God is. God is one. God is love. God is within you. That's my message, and I will continue to say it 
in whatever way I need to say it. I will say it a thousand times in a thousand different ways so that whoever is listening can understand and also so that I can continue to understand it on a deeper and deeper level. Be loved, be happy, be at peace, and thank you for watching.